In this video, I'm going to cover updates to the spreadsheet from my previous video. A link to it is included in the description below. The new features that have been added include support of elliptical arcs by allowing the X and Y radii to be different lengths, independent control of the wall thickness of the shell in the X axis and the Y axis and the ability to change between inches and millimeters. Also included is uh, documentation. The SVG code that this uh, spreadsheet generates uses the SVG elliptical arc command. This command uses uh, X uh, radius and a Y radius to draw the arc. The first version of this spreadsheet kept both of the values the same. In this version of this starting radius has been renamed to be the starting radius of the y-axis, and a starting and ending uh, x-axis radius has been added. The two x-axis radii are specified as ratios of the y-axis radii. In this example shown here, the uh, starting radius of the y-axis uh, for this first arc at the very beginning of the spiral is going to be uh, three-eighths of an inch. Specified here right below it is the starting radius of the x-axis for that uh, first arc is going to be a ratio of a half, half of that starting y ra radius. And that calculates to be um, 0.1875 inches. The next uh, ending axis radius is for uh, the last arc of the spiral. And the spreadsheet calculates uh, what the y-axis radius of that last arc is. And here I've specified that I want the x-axis for that arc to be a radius length of uh, 3 quarters of the y radius. And seen here, it's calculated it to be 2.192 inches. The Two independent controls for the wall thickness for the X and Y are these two fields here. Um, they are forced additional growth to the X and uh, Y axis. And I originally um, added them to just cover the kerf, but um, as I used them, it became clear to me that it could help in um, controlling both the, the X and Y axis wall thicknesses, as you can see calculated down here. So by changing these two values up here, I could not only um, control the number of wedges needed and get, I'm trying to get the actual number here closer to being a, an actual integer, but I can also uh, keep the, um, actual calculated values here of both walls uh, in both directions uh, closer to being the same. If these two values here are left as the same value and just said, you know, like I'm going to uh, cover the kerf um, value here for both directions, then the wall thickness in the x-axis is going to be following the ratios specified up here for the radius the wall thickness um, would start as, in this case, uh, half the wall thickness of the y-axis in the beginning, and it will end at three-quarters of the wall thickness of the y-axis at the, in the last arc. The rest of the spreadsheet works just the same as it did before as far as um, creating the SVG code. You'd, I just press the button and copy and paste it and create a file to take in the Inkscape. Here are two examples, uh, patterns that were created using the spreadsheet. In this example here, the x-axis, both the starting and ending radii of the x-axis were uh, kept at a quarter of the y radius. And in this example, I used a ratio of one and a half at the starting arc here, and then at the very last arc here, my ending ratio is a half of the Y radius. Here are pictures. This is showing, I just included so that you see how I use the patterns. These um, 
This is for the first shells where the uh, X ratios are both a quarter of the Y radius, and uh, they've been glued to the um, uh, wedges. This is the shell that that produced. Um, I did have to enlarge the hole here in the middle because uh, this is when I realized that the radius, the thickness in the X direction of the shell wall actually thins out quite a bit, and I lost control of this, the, the circle, so uh, I've sanded it out, as you can see here, uh, and enlarged it quite a bit. Otherwise, it would have been very close to a pinhole. And then this is a look from a front view. Uh, and this shell, this was just a, a test case to prove that the spreadsheet was working fine. You can see that I did not finish the inside. I didn't take the time to uh, really clean out the inside and make it smooth. And this is the second uh, example where the X radius started at uh, one and a half here in the middle, and the ratio at the end was half the radius of the Y axis. And here's the front on view. Here you can see that I did on this one finish out the inside um, much more cleanly. Also added to the spreadsheet, you can see here is the units and you can select between inches and millimeters, changes this uh, multiplier value, which is used as a uh, scaling factor, which is used by the, uh, the JavaScript behind the uh, create SVG code button. I came up with these values by printing a design that was created from the spreadsheet and then measuring the x and y axis of the box the, the pattern that was created and comparing it to the length of block and width of block uh, fields here in the spreadsheet. As far as documentation, um, a diagram has been added to graphically show the uh, how the labels correlate to the block of wood. Uh, as you can see here, I've got the width of the diagonal, length of this edge is the length of the block. Width of the block is in this direction. Thickness is shown here. And I also try to show um, the sides where the patterns are glued to. In addition, I have added uh, hover notes here to try and give uh, more information about the usage of the different fields here. A URL is included in the description below so that you can view the spreadsheet and or copy it. Because uh, I've had issues trying to copy you know, and or download. I've added a, a tab here for reloading the JavaScript. I'm not sure that the JavaScript is really stored or how it's stored in uh, Google Sheets here. So I've included this script, this tab to uh, include instructions how to reload the JavaScript once you've got a copy of this uh, running where you can see it. And then this is the actual JavaScript here. To access the, the text in this um, script here, just double click on it. And then you should be able to copy and paste onto the clipboard. I hope you find this video informative and useful. And please leave comments below. Thank you.